You're listening to Willamette Wake Up, and I'm Melanie Zermer. Salem Reads is back. Salem Reads brings the community together with one book and a series of events that piggyback on the themes of that book. Salem Reads is organized by the Salem Public Library Foundation, the Salem Library, and many community partners. Kate Van Ummerson from the Library Foundation and Sonia Somerville, Outreach and Program Supervisor, are here to tell us about the book and all the activities and events coming in February that'll bring us together. So, Kate, let's start with you. Is there anything that you'd want to add about Salem Reads? Well, Salem Reads was started eight years ago by the Library Foundation in collaboration with the Salem Public Library. Uh, We're enjoying our eighth year of programming. Um, It's been a very interesting process building this this system, and uh, we're taking it to new heights every year. Right. I mean, I've been following Salem Reads since the beginning, and it amazes me how creative you are in coming up with events and presentations and whatnot that really speak to the themes of the book. And we're going to get that into that in just a little bit. But why don't we talk about what is the book this year and why was it chosen? So our book this year is The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. And this is a it's really an epic family tale. Um, so it, it brings together members of a family around uh, a call from their matriarch that she is she is dying and that they need to come and get their inheritance before before she goes away. Um, and that is the moment at which a lot of magical realism starts to play into the story. So as she passes uh, beyond this life, she gives them each an inheritance, which is not maybe what we would be expecting. This isn't the family money or jewels or or art collection. Instead, they each grow on their person um, a small flower. Um, and, and there's a a suggestion that they are now tied to her and and her story, but that story is somewhat secret. Um, The family then goes on for seven years, they live life, and at a point they begin to die and uh, be be essentially hunted and die in unusual ways. And so the remaining family members go to Ecuador, which is where their matriarch is from, to try to uncover the secrets of her childhood that have led the family into this situation. It's a very rich text in terms of understanding the family dynamics, um, and also like slowly and, and beautifully uncovering this this very rich and complex life that Orchidea Divina lived in Ecuador and how it's impacting the family today. Well, it sounds very interesting and in, certainly intriguing. What was it about this book that made it ripe for Salem Reads this year? We um, had hoped to have a book with a, a, Span- a Hispanic author and also Hispanic characters. And we had had Hispanic characters in other books, but not featured in this way. And so the way the process works is that there's a group of people that work on the book selection committee. We uh, choose books that meet our criteria, such as the reading level, the length, the availability of different formats, such as print, audiobooks, um, and also that those books are in Spanish. So um, we chose a, a number of titles to review. And then in April, we submit the, the ones that meet our criteria to a public vote that is uh, run through the Salem Public Library website. And then the, the community chooses the book. Great. And uh, remind, remind me again the name of the book. It's The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. Great, great. Thanks for that. And um, so what are some of the themes in the book? Because that's what's going to highlight what we talk about next. Absolutely. So this book, I think, is so appealing to readers because of, of the complexity of its themes. There are themes that are very universal, um, and yet there's a very rich cultural exploration included. And so we have an opportunity to learn about Ecuador and, and life in Ecuador 
and a culture that maybe we're not all terribly familiar with. So that combination is really powerful. Um, the strongest themes that run through this, definitely death is a, is a very strong theme. Um, facing death, coping with death, the impact that um, a loved one's death has on us. And that is certainly um, something that is universally relatable. Um, and also there's, there's a lot of intrigue around family secrets. Uh, what we communicate, what we don't, what we hold back, and how those secrets or the things we never say um, impact our family dynamics. And again, I think it does not matter where where you're from um, or what kind of family you're in. There's there's some familiarity there that when you make surprising discoveries about your family, it can be very impactful. Um, and then a third really strong theme through the entire thing is is horticulture and connections to nature and the things that grow, sort of trying to control nature, but also interacting with nature. And so we have we have really woven all of those kinds of themes into our plans for our activities this, mm -hmm. this February. Yeah. Well, let's start with uh, one of the themes, the magical realism. And I know that there's an event around that or a, a presentation around that, but what is magical realism? So magical realism is when you encounter in fiction um, unexplainable things rooted in a re otherwise realistic setting. Um, it is a very strong cultural tradition, although many authors use elements of magical realism. It, it is rooted in Latin American culture and has its strongest um, examples and ties that come out of Latin American um, writers. It is also a, a very political art form because it is a, a way that many authors can challenge the status quo and explore their uh, resistance to certain political realities without being overt about that. It, it is tied in with um, political and social protest as well. Um, and that makes it uh, really even a more significant part of, of Latin American culture. Mm, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. And like I'd mentioned, there is going to be a, a presentation around magical realism. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll get into some of the other events planned. Well, we are very fortunate to have um, working in our community as an assistant professor of English at Willamette University, Teresa Hernandez, whose sort of field of study is very much about magical realism. It's what she has researched um, as, through her education and what she teaches at Willamette. And so she is going to come and do a really much better job than I did of <laughs> explaining the, uh, the, both the cultural and political significance of magical realism. She'll be, of course, drawing from this particular text, but also highlighting and guiding people to other significant texts in this genre um, and preparing people to more uh, in a more sophisticated way read those texts and understand the messages that are underneath um, all of the, the the magical realism elements so we're very excited to have her she'll be here at 6 p.m on Tuesday February 13th and I really hope people take advantage of that and everyone will walk away with some inspiration for further reading. Like now that they have a better palette and understanding, she's going to give some book lists for people to go and continue to explore this really significant genre. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that. And if you've just joined us, I'm talking with Sonia Somerville, who you just heard speak, and Kate Van Ummerson. And they're both part of the Salem Reads Project, which uh, of which there are many events uh, coming up in February. And it's all based around the book, The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zareda Cordova. And uh, so tell us some more events uh, that are based on the themes of the book. One of the things that uh, will happen for the entire month of February is an art hall exhibit of local um, Hispanic and Native American artists who will be doing their interpretations of the book in their various art forms. And so that will be on display at the, in the library art hall um, from 
January 30th to March 3rd. And that's something that uh, we're really proud this year to be working in very close collaboration with the Salem Art Association. And they are curating the show and uh, they have helped uh, gather the artists for this particular show. And we really feel like these are people who have lived experience in, in these cultures and that their art will be very representative of that. Um, we also have a city club meeting and that is uh, around the subject of genealogy. And so that will be February 2nd at the Dye House in the Willamette Heritage Center. And it starts at 1130 and goes through one. It's a lunch meeting of the city club. Um, then we have radio shows, this radio show, as well as talking about art. And the talking about art show is on Friday, February 9th, and that's at 9 a.m. Joel Zach will speak with the artists about their, um, you know, their interpretations of the art. And those are, both of these programs are also ones that are archived. So you can listen to them later if you miss them live. And then we have a history lecture on Ecuadorian history, and that's with a professor of um, Dr. Marco Placenia, and that is to learn about the Ecuadorian history that's that's so woven into this this work. Um, and then we also have a documentary movie called Oil and Water that is. Um, going to be shown at Laux uh, Auditorium at the library on February 1st at, from 6 to 7.30. We also, as we always do, are encouraging um, our community to get together and talk about this text, uh, explore what we've learned and learn from each other. Um, so we have three book discussions planned. There's one here at the library. It will be our noontime book discussion on February 6th, but we are also heading out into the community for these discussions. We have one planned at uh, a book and brew. So this is for adults only because we are meeting at a brewery. Um, we're meeting at For Tomorrow We Die, um, which seems like a really good place to meet and discuss a book about a woman who dies tomorrow. Um, and, uh, so we'll be buying some snacks. We've got a, a, a beautiful room there that they're accommodating us with and inviting people to come and just perhaps enjoy a beverage and have that discussion. And then uh, that's on February 21st. And then the following day, we will be having a book discussion in Spanish and that is being hosted. Uh, we're partnering with La Casita, um, which is in Northeast Salem, and with a, a group of folks who meet on a regular basis, but everyone is invited to come and join in that discussion. So one of our librarians will be there to lead that discussion in Spanish. And then uh, at the end of the month, like I said, another very strong theme here um, is death. And so we're going to get into it. We're, we're going to talk about this. So we have two death cafe sessions planned. These are a, a branded style of getting people together around cake and tea and encouraging them to open up and talk about their feelings about, about death and their, their thoughts. So that is happening the final week of February. On February 27th, we'll be having that discussion in English on Tuesday afternoon. And the following day, we will have a Spanish language um, Cafe de Muerta in the, in the evening at the library. Um, and then finally, the, the final theme, like I said, nature was uh, is an important theme. And so we are exploring that in two ways. We're making, uh, beginning of the month, there's a session to make ribbon roses. There's a very special, intricate way of folding ribbon into these beautiful small roses. We'll be teaching people how to do that. That's very referential to the roses that end up on the people in the story. And then at the end of the month, um, a, a nature-based flower arranging workshop taught by Jody Thomas of Little Lantern Floral, who really specializes in like found item, mixing found items into her flower arrangements. I'm really excited to see what she helps our community create. 
Well, that sounds really exciting. And again, if you've just joined us, we're talking about Salem Reads, and it's one book, one community, and the book is Inheritance of Orchidea Divina. Am I saying that right? (laughs) <laughs> Orchidea Divina by Zareda Cordova, and um, all of these events around 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 these themes. And I will uh, plug that we do have a Salem Death Cafe, two of them, one that meets virtually and one that actually meets at Tomorrow We Die. Once a month on a Wednesday, they meet there. So all of this is quite uh, relevant. And uh, we just, well, I'm at Wake Up, just aired uh, a, a years-long series on, uh, on death and how to d- die well a series called Taking Charge. We've talked about a lot of events. I know there's more. that People aren't going to remember the dates and the places. Where can people go to get a list of all of the events happening? So there are a couple of different places. Um, A really great place to start is on the Salem Public Library website. Our main landing page has a news story. From there, you can actually view and download the beautiful uh, PDF of the beautiful flyer that um, has been created for this month. You can also visit the Salem Public Library Foundation webpage. They have a, an entire piece of the site that is devoted to Salem Reads um, and print copies of this flyer readily available at the library. We have a display where we have all of the books out for people to come and check out and enjoy, and that does include the literature to support it. So I um, would encourage anybody visiting the library to pick up a flyer and see if they're interested in any of these events. Great. And other than the library, where can people buy the book if they want to actually own it? They can buy it at the book bin downtown and also at Reader's Guide in uh, West Salem. And the friends, uh, the friends of the uh, Salem Public Library also have a few copies of it in their store, which is here in the library. All right. Very good. Very good. And I know some of the events you need to register for, and a few might even have a fee involved. So I think it's important for people to uh, see that um, that calendar soon. It, it is true. Now, all the events are free, so that's that's a wonderful piece okay. of news. But uh, there are two, the both of the craft-based um, Mm-hmm. Um, are going to be there's going to be more interest than we have seats sure. unfortunately so the the red ribbon um the ribbon roses and the flower arranging are going to require um advanced sign up but everything else is open to drop in and enjoy so you've told us how to uh find out more about all the events and you've told us about the book where to get it is there anything that we haven't talked about sonia or kate that you think people should know about right now about salem reads 2024 well you know i do think we should we should highlight the just the fact and the idea that we do continue to grow and um an experiment as we go through the years with Salem Reads. And one of the things that we are really excited about this year is that we do have a couple of events that are happening outside the library. That's important to us. We've tried that before. We do try to incorporate that. But this is the first year that we have two events that are um, completely in in Spanish. Um, And we hope to really engage our community in a new way by running programs that happen in Spanish and are very eager to see how that turns out. Thank you. Kate uh, Van Emerson and Sonia Somerville, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us about Salem Reads. 